Education Today. I'm not watching Education Today. I'm not starring in it, am I? Well, you're in it. What do you mean? I'm in it? Yeah! Really? Yeah! Oh. Well, Education Today starts now. Yeah! Hello, welcome to Education Today. I'm Melissa Burchetti from Catanning High School in the Armstrong School District. Today, we're going to look at a remarkable puppet show called Appleby Pond. A dedicated group of high school students perform these puppet shows to kindergarten, first, and second graders. They are a true delight, and the puppet shows share an important message, as we'll find out. Our first guests are from Elderton High School. We have Megan Johnson and Tyler Walker. Welcome to the show. So, tell us briefly about yourselves. I'm Megan Johnson. I'm a sophomore at Elderton High School, and I'm the secretary of Appleby Pond. Um, my name is Tyler Walker. I'm a senior at Elderton High School, and I'm the president of Appleby Pond at the school. Um, we see you have some puppets here with you today. Um, could you please tell us what roles they play? I brought along Arnold Appleby. He is kind of the head of the show. He uh, does the introductions and does the closing speeches. He kind of teaches the other puppets the right things to do, the things not to do in the pond, so he's kind of the head of them all. And I have Mary, as you can see, she's the mermaid of the pond. She's just one of the other members, and she's one of the ones that gets the lessons taught to her and learns the consequences, consequences of her actions. Um, now that we've been properly introduced, tell me a little about App Appleby Pond. What is it and um, why your school does it? Albie Pond is an organization based mainly around the idea of teaching young kids about no alcohol and no tobacco use. Um, we decided to do it at the school because we have an elementary school and we have two elementary schools flooding into our high school so we figured it would be a good thing to get the message out to younger students before they get to high school so they can know before they get there. Good. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Nope. No? no. Yeah, I bet the kids really look up to the yeah, they, they do. They do, yeah. They, yeah. they really look forward to it. Um, well, mm -hmm. how long has your school been doing it for? We've been doing it for about 14 years now. Wow. So it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. cool. But the kids enjoy it, so we continue it. Cool. Um, what is it like to perform? Uh, it's interesting. It's, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun at practices because it's puppets and everybody has fun and you laugh and you joke around. Uh, the day of the performances are a little bit more serious, but you still have fun with the kids because the kids enjoy it so much. It's still a lot of fun to do and you get to do the voices, so we enjoy doing it a lot. What kind of reactions do you get from the kids? when They They enjoy it. They really like it. Um, they'll respond to you when you ask them questions mm -hmm. and they like the activities you do with them afterwards and they learn a lot from And they, they cooperate through the whole thing? Oh, they, yeah. they do. Like you'll say, does anybody remember my name? And the kids will scream the name oh. and they really enjoy it. Cool. Um, so what sort of preparation is required? Like how many days a week? How long? Um, well, first we contact the school or the place wherever we're going to be holding the puppet show. We get it approved from the district to make sure we're allowed. And then we'll practice however long we need to, basically. It depends on which play we're doing. <coughs> and then we go to the school and we set up the stage and we have fun with the kids. Cool. Um, to the students, uh, why did you get involved in Appleby Pond? Uh, I got involved in Appleby Pond. Albie Pond is not something you can just get into. It's actually, you have to be voted into it. At the end of the year, the uh, heads of Albie Pond will get together and decide who do we think should be inducted next year. Uh, usually we induct a whole class of freshmen, whoever, whatever freshmen we believe show the qualities that are needed to be in Albie Pond. And it's an excellent resume builder. It sounds good and it's a lot of fun to do and you t get to teach good messages to the kids. Cool. Um, so when are your shows? Like what? We occasionally will have some in the fall, but they're usually held in the spring. Cool. Um, what skits are you doing now? What do they teach? Mostly all of our skits based around lessons. The ones mostly we're doing now are based on tobacco and alcohol use. Uh, the skit you'll see earlier, later on, is about um, 
the younger kids experiment with alcohol and drugs, and they learn that they're foreign substances and they shouldn't be putting them into the body. So that's basically what all those kids are about we're doing. So um, do you think these kids understand all the messages you, you um, portray through the performances? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It depends on the play that we're doing and how in-depth that play is, but we'll always do an activity afterwards to make sure that they got the message from it. Cool. Um, so before we take a break, do you guys have anything else to add to it? No, we'd just like to thank you guys for having us on the show, oh, sure. everything like that, and uh, allowing us to tell more about the club that we do and the message that it sends. So we'd like to thank you guys. Yeah, it's a very wonderful thing you guys do for the kids. Thank, thank you. you. Well, now we're going to take a look at some Appleby Pond skits in action. When we return, we'll have a group of Appleby Pond players, this time from Catanning High School. Let's take a look. Skit today, it's called Daisy's Courage. So, someone is feeling left out down in the pond. Let's see who it is. Hey, Game Boys and Girls. Do you all remember my name? Great day. What's so special about today? Oh, come over here so I can whisper to you. I don't want Clayton to hear. You come closer too, Daisy. Oh, hi everyone. Oh, hi Clayton. Um, excuse me, is anybody home in there? Hey Mary and Tad, what's the problem? Problem? There's no problem, Clayton. At least not with me. What are you whispering about? Well, Clayton, if we wanted you to know, we wouldn't be whispering. Boy, fine friends you are. I thought friends were supposed to make you feel better. Well, Clayton, I guess we're not your friends. Well, now wait a minute, Mary. Clayton's my friend, and I don't like it when people say mean things about other people. I don't like what you're saying either, Mary. Well, I don't like crabs, and I'm not inviting Clayton to my party. Well, that's okay, Mary. But I won't be able to come to your party either. I don't want to be part of hurting someone else. What? Count me out of your party, too. I don't want to hurt Clayton. And I think I'll be dead from the way we treated him. Yeah. Well, that makes me feel sad. What's the matter, Mary? Nobody wants to come to my party. Now, that's not the whole story, Mary. Tell the truth. Well, I was being mean to Clayton, and Tad and Daisy said they wouldn't come to my party. Well, how does that make you feel? Sad and not liked very much. How do you think Clayton felt when you being mean to him? Well, probably the same way. How about it, Clayton? How do you feel? Pretty much the same way. I'm really sorry, Clayton. I was being mean, too. That's okay. You see, Mary, you have to be careful not to stay and do things that hurt other people. Sometimes, the mean things you do stay with a person a long time, and you can make people feel really sad and left out. I felt like that before. Then you know how much it hurts, and you wouldn't want to do that to someone else, would you? No. I really wouldn't. I don't feel like anybody likes me anymore. Well, we still like you, Mary, but we won't allow you to be mean to any of the other pond creatures. I'm really sorry I was so mean, Clayton. That's all right. If the party is still on and we're all invited, maybe we could decide who will bring the popcorn. Great. Now you young folks, go ahead with your plans, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Yes, boys and girls, most all of us like to feel loved and be part of a group. But sometimes a group might not make safe, healthy decisions. Do you all remember when Mary was being mean to Clayton? Yes. yes. Well, Daisy decided that wasn't the thing to do. And she had the courage to tell Mary how she felt. That was very, very good. And if you're ever in that situation, I want you to do the same thing. Well, this is Arnold Appleby saying, until next time, be safe 
and have the courage to let others know how you feel when they are hurting you or someone else. Okay, we're back with some Catanning students. Robin Schick and Jesse Coven. Welcome to the show. They're also joined by their teacher, Mrs. Judy Coven. Welcome, guys. So Hi, tell you. us briefly about yourselves. Um, my name is Robin Schick. I'm 18 and a senior at Catanning High School. I've been doing Applebee Pond for three years. I'm Jesse Coven. I'm also a senior at Catanning High School. I've been doing Applebee Pond for three years also. And I'm Judy Coven, and I teach health and physical education at the Catanian High School and I also take on Applebee Pond and another uh, tattoo which is Teens Against Tobacco Use. And we, we've been doing this for three years. Great, great. Um, I see you guys have some puppets with you, <laughs> obviously. What roles do they play in this, each of the skits? Well, I have Arnold and his job is to come in and he introduces the beginning and the end of each skit and he kind of summarizes the lesson that they were supposed to learn during the skit. So he's in charge. He's in charge of the farm. <laughs> this is my puppet. His name's Handy Gander, the great fix-it goose. And he just <laughs> fix all, fixes all the problems at the pond. Cool. <laughs> okay, this one here is Harry Appleby. And he has cancer from smoking for 39 years. So he has a stoma here in his neck. So he sounds like this. It, so for the, woman, the, the student that uh, plays our, our Harry, it really takes a lot of energy out of her to, to oh. sound like he would, you know, she would if um, you know, she had it also. I bet. Uh, this one is Tadpole. He's the youngest creature that lives in the pond. And he has trouble making good decisions. So the other creatures help him make good decisions. This is Daisy Duck. She's a loyal friend and she likes to see the good in everything. And she's, she's also a sincere and a friend and a listener for everyone. Okay. And this one is my favorite, <laughs> <laughs> Clayton the Crab. And he uh, doesn't get along with a lot of the other creatures in the pond. He doesn't fight with them, but he has self-esteem problems because he looks different with his legs on his head. So he kind of a loner, he likes to be, you know, by himself, but the other ones, they help him get to know everyone else and be more friendly. Cool. <laughs> Mary Mermaid, she's the pond gossiper. She's kind of loud and obnoxious. <laughs> you have she's to have like one the of women, them. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the kids all like her. Yeah, yeah all the she's little kids. pretty. Yeah, she's pretty. Oh. Okay. Good. Uh, this one is Freddy the fish. And he's a little older than Tadpole, the one I showed you, but he still likes to make fast decisions and doesn't really think about them. And so the other creatures help him make better decisions too. Um, behind us here, we have Buddy Beaver. <laughs> uh, he likes to make sound decisions and is known as a diligent worker. Okay. And behind me here is Bullfrog. And what he does is he is the oldest and wisest creature that lives in the pond. So he helps all the other ones make good decisions. <laughs> all right, now that we've been properly introduced, give me your take on why Applebee Pond is so important. Well, I, I think that the drug problem in our society is keeps getting younger with our younger children. So we need to get the message out early. And so what Applebee Pond is, is a prevention program uh, to tell the students you know, healthy ways of living and uh, how to handle situations when they do come up. Yeah, it gets tough, you, the oh, younger definitely. the kids are. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what is it like to perform? Oh, I love performing with the little kids because whenever we start, we're back, we're back behind the curtain so they can't see us, we can't see them. But we'll dance before the show, so we'll be out dancing and it's so funny because they just start laughing. Oh. And like you're already interacting with them and you haven't even started the show. So right. you kind of get them drawn into what's going on and it is a lot of fun. Great. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is really fun to do. Um, the only thing that really gets to you is after having your arm above that oh bar for a while. Yeah. But it gets it's tired. tiring, yeah. <laughs> you just want to put your arm down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of preparation is required? Um, well, we had a lot of practices after school getting ready for this. 
Um, we even videotaped ourselves doing it, and then we watched it to make sure we were, you know, interacting with each other and had our heads turning when we should mm -hmm. and be talking when we should. So it did take a lot of practice, and it is difficult to get what you say to match up with what your hand's doing, you know? Yeah, that was perhaps the hardest part is, like, people who just came in and started it, they have to practice actually right. moving their mouth with the words. So. Yeah, it's not something you can just jump into. You right. have to practice. And not only did they practice after school, but also in the, in the fall, they took a class, a six-hour session, with learning the curriculum and, you know, how to go about uh, putting on a, a show like this. And during practices, do you watch them and critique them? Oh, you definitely. <laughs> I yell at them. Because okay. a lot of times, sometimes, like Mary might slunch down but just because, it, you know, their arms it's get easy, tired. Yeah. So I just say, come on, you've got to sit up straighter there. You've got to talk louder. So, yeah, I critique it all the time. And how, how long are the shows, uh, oh, you know, each performance? They're, they're about an hour. Well, 40, 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. By the time the kids get in, it might be closer to an hour, but, uh, yeah. Wow. Great, great. So, um, why did you guys get involved in Appleby Pond? Well, I think it's important for the younger kids to just know that it's bad to smoke and not to succumb to, like, peer pressure and stuff like that. That's great. Definitely. I mean, it is a problem that we see, and we just want to get the word out before they get much older, you know, mm -hmm. help them make these good decisions. Anything from, you know, sharing, don't leave others out, you know, have fun with other people, incorporate others into your plans, to, you know, drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So this program can cover a large basis of, you know, educational things. Yeah, and I think the wonderful thing about it is you guys are seniors and kids really look up to you. I'm sure you have younger brothers and sisters and um, people who know you, seen you in different activities and stuff. They really mm -hmm. look up to you guys, I'm sure. So that's great. Um, what skits are you doing now and what do they teach? Okay, well, first of all, we do do an introduction, so we introduce all the puppets and what they do in the pond, and then we, we do put on like four different skits. So we pick out the skits we think are most important, and we have like 35 to pick from. So the ones that we're doing right now, the first one is called Daisy's Courage, and that deals with, so with social issues. And that deals with Clayton, the one that Robin has there. <laughs> and since he does look different, he has a low self-esteem. So we're working with, you know, social skills with, uh, with our first skit. And our second skit is called Freddy's Follies. So um, Freddy is one of the younger creatures in the pond, him and Tadpole there that are sitting beside each other. And so a lot of times being young, they can be persuaded by the other pond creatures to do things that aren't right, like to do drugs. Um, and the third skit is called Freddy's Hope for His Brother. And Freddy's brother ha is an alcoholic. And so poor Freddie, he needs someone to talk to about the problems in his family. So it's good to have people around that you can talk to when you have problems. And the last one is called Health and Healing. And that one deals with, with uh, Harry over here. And from smoking for 39 years, he did get, you know, ha he does have cancer and had to have his voice box removed. So that also sends a good message. And uh, Harry wants everybody in the uh, audience to know the, ha the different hazards with tobacco. So we, you know, we share those with them after the skit is over. Wow, yeah. that's, that's great. <laughs> um, do you think these kids fully understand the lesson you're trying to teach them or, you know? I think so, because after each skit, we talk about it, the kids ask questions, and they do a good job. And then they go back to their uh, classrooms, and I've heard different teachers telling me that yes, they came back and they said, well, we're not going to do drugs, we're oh. not going to do tobacco, and we're not going to drink. Okay. And some even write in their journals, uh, were writing in their journals about what, you know, favorite pond creature there was and why. So, it, you know. So they really cooperate and participate mm -hmm. in this? Definitely. And, you know, they don't talk, you know, kids that age have a tendency to be, you know, rambunctious. Yeah. And, no, know. all eyes are on the puppets. That's Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do get reactions. Like sometimes the classrooms will give us like little no note cards or something, oh. with little messages oh. that they learn and yeah. who they like the best and everything. Yeah, thank you cards. Yeah. Well, um, so do you guys have anything else to add about Appleby Pond? Well, one thing that we all do after we perform at each school, we like to give each 
students something to, rem to remember about you know, the, the, the different dangers with the drugs and alcohol. And so this year, we've gotten, it says, I don't do drugs, I'm too smart to start. And this is a zipper pull. And so we, as a, a club, we sell pens in our high school, which says Catanning High School on it. And with selling these, and I make big chocolate chip cookies, and I oh, sell those. We all know how good those are. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have the monies to purchase, like these, uh, this year cost over $700 to get for all my kindergarten, first and second graders. So that's over close to 800 students. So mm -hmm. we like to give them a little momentum at the end. Too. How about the sound? Do you pay for that too? Yes, um, we, I've gotten grants to pay for the sound equipment and for the puppets. Good. So we're just all ready to go. Well, thank you guys so much for thank being you. here. It was so nice having you here. <laughs> and the puppets too. <laughs> um, well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank you three for being here and also the students from Elderton, Megan Johnson and Tyler Walker. We'd also like to thank their teacher, Rhonda Reed from Elderton High School. Big thanks also to our film crew. Today we had Catanning High School students led by their teacher, Mr. Edwin Bauer. Way to go, guys. Please join us again next week for another look at Armstrong School District for updated news and information on the district. Please visit our website. Have a great week. Hello, I'm Josh Serene from Catanning High School, and this is what's happening around ASD. Theater and musical season continues at the Armstrong School District with one more theater production at Ford City High School for you to see. They're doing a 20th century celebration. It's by Greg Gilpin and Dennis Kramer. It's basically a look at the, a radio station that's doing a retrospective look at the best music of the century, one decade at a time. The cast, the cast consists of 21 singers, 12 dancers, various actors, and a 10-piece orchestra. It's at 7 p.m. Thursday and Friday, April 20th and 21st at Ford City High School's Auditorium. Tickets cost $5 at the door. There's free admission for Gold Card members. The directors are teachers Dennis Kramer, Pitt Orchestra and General Director, Josh Meyer, Chorus, Tom Capone, Set Design and Stage Crew, and Local Dance Instructor Mary Johns, Choreography. Also, in other news around ASD, the results are in from the first ever wellness survey of all 6,200 students in the Armstrong School District. They show that more work needs to be done to combat childhood weight problems that can lead to serious health risks. Some 35% of all Armstrong School District students, about 2,170 students, are either overweight or at risk of being overweight. This is according to a body mass index survey that the school district did earlier this school year in partnership with ACMH Hospital and Children's Community Pediatrics. Since last year, the school district has been working with ACMH and Children's Community Pediatrics to create a countrywide approach to escalating childhood weight issues and their related health risks. At Elderton Elementary School, students are working hard to put healthy principles into practice. Their children in kindergarten through sixth grade have been voluntarily walking the hallways every day for 30 minutes at recess. All Elderton Elementary parents are getting nutrition and wellness newsletters. School bathrooms reinforce the message with wellness facts and tips on the walls. Teachers will share the Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the things you can do that are good for you, and reinforce its concepts with interactive projects throughout March. Elderton Elementary's efforts are a pilot project that the district could expand to all schools. The three partner agencies are applying for grants from the American Academy of Pediatrics and other sources to maintain and hopefully expand the wellness initiative. Finally, in other news around ASD, a team of school district administrators has begun classroom visits to observe trends across the district. 
It's to see firsthand the impact of pro programs and resources that have been implemented. The 12 administrators are part of the school district's accountability team. This team helps with district schools with the resources and guidance they need to meet their academic goals. The accountability team meets regularly to review student achievement data and to determine where state and federal monies should be spent to meet instructional needs in February. The classroom visits began st begin starting in the Catanning attendance area. In March, the visits will be to school in the Ford City attendance area, in April to Elderton area schools, and in May to schools in the West Shemokin attendance area. Building principals perform regular teacher evaluations, but these visits are different. These classroom visits will focus on equality programs and the artful use of resources. That's all for now. I'm Josh Serene from Catanning High School. Keep watching. Sorry. Should I start this over? Yeah. Here. Uh, I'm going to start there. Thanks. So I don't plug this too. I'll just no, stay. No, yeah, I don't. Do what are you talking about? Alright. <laughs> Megan. What? Smile. I really okay. don't want to do They're at the beginning. Just show where you're here. You Alyssa, can practice it if you're looking. How are you feeling before your big uh, host debut? Well, I'm pretty nervous. This could make me or break me. You can run the tell I'm wrong there. <laughs> Mr. Bauer, Mr. Bauer, you have a string hang from your shirt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I have heard that one. <laughs> no, it wasn't because he ruined it. And Josh bringing them back. <laughs> you think they're dead? Josh brings them back. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Today we are going to look at a remarkable puppet show called Applebee Pond. So I got up early and I got a shower and then I like had to put all this makeup on and that took a while. Okay, so good. You know what I like though with her makeup? You don't like it. put on like a big like cage yeah. of like, the oh, lady yeah. disgusting. That's gross. Yeah. You be the teleprompter. Hear anybody? Can you hear me? Hold on. Somebody talk into the headset. Can you hear me? 